bomb. Guys, I'm going to be watching the chat for any more invites, and uh, we will get started. So thank you all for coming. Um, this is the Officers Academy Introduction and Training, Introduction and General Leadership Training. Um, and yeah, basically we're going to go over a few different topics around today. We're going to be talking about what is a leader and, you know, why it's important um, in planet side. We're going to be talking about the very basics of how to get started doing that and uh, how to get involved with all of that. And so the very first thing I want to talk about is what it means to be a leader in Planetside, right? So when you are in a platoon, whether you're the PL or the squad lead, you are in charge of a set number of people, right? Whether that's 47 other people or just 11 other people, it's a responsibility that you take on yourself to lead people, um, whether to victory or to a loss, but always for a good time and memories that people will have uh, potentially forever. Um, so always want to make sure that you're giving them the best possible experience that you can. And what that means, right? You as the leader, you're the number one, you're the person in charge, the manager and caretaker of everyone in your platoon or squad. You're the one who makes the callouts, right, and distributes tasks to everyone in your platoon or squad, but you're also there to take input and inform information from everyone, right? It's not just all about you, it's, it's not about um, not, you know, ever listening to anyone and doing everything on your own, just the opposite. You're all there as a team. Number one in the platoon doesn't mean that you are there to boss everyone around and you know give people a bad experience. It just means that you're the one who makes the final call. You're the person who gives directions. But again, ultimately, you are the person who is in charge of giving them a good time and keep bringing people back to the game. Um, I'm going to quote Kasami when I say this, and that's that leaders are what brings this people back to the game each and every single time. Yep, games, yeah, exactly, right? You can be a chill platoon, you can be a super sweaty uh, platoon, right? We've got HK, you guys might have heard of Prey or B-Way, those outfits, right? They're the more sweaty. Um, but it doesn't matter what your style is, ultimately you're there to give people a good experience, and that's what's going to bring people back again and again and again you know there we've got this game is a shooter in some ways you can look at it like a a real-time strategy game right if you're looking at the Where at the map the training platoon. oh my god oh one second we're in fear training <laughs> so yeah we've got this game right it's a nice shooter it's a nice uh lots of other things but primarily it's all about being a group and having a good time together and it's the leaders that make that happen it's the pls it's it's our sls our squad leads so just want to put that out there first and foremost it's probably the most important thing i'm going to say tonight um because it's the thing that you should always have in your mind um when you're leading Okay, and then next, a bit more of a technical thing, right? What is a squad? What's its function? Very, very basically, a squad is made of 12 people, or potentially one-fourth of a platoon, right? If a platoon is 48 people. Um, squads can be standalone, right? They don't have to always be in platoons. You can run by yourself doing things separate from a platoon, or, you know, whatever, if, if there's only... Uh, if there's only one one squad up and that's all you want to do, that's that's on you to decide how big you want your your squad to be or how big you want your platoon to be. Um, so that doesn't really matter, but what does matter is how you want to drive your squad. Um, like a, like we were just talking about a second ago, how casual you want to make it, how sweaty you want to make it. Um, but very quickly before I go into some other things, I do want to talk about how to open one. Um, especially with the recent changes that 
uh, the planet side two devs have made two squads and how you open them and such like that um, so I'm going to we do have quite a few people here um, and I think a lot of you have or already know how to open a squad um, but I want to talk through it quickly and then if there's anyone who hasn't I would like to uh, walk you through that but very quickly if you guys want to open up your uh, squad menu right so right now we, it's, uh, it's actually going to be labeled platoon because that's what we have open right now um, but if you weren't in a platoon or you weren't in a, uh, a squad it would just be labeled as uh, squad um, squad finder I think maybe um, and you would see that that list of squads but if you open that right at the very bottom you'll see uh, it'll it'll probably be um, grayed out for a lot of you just because a lot, you know most of us aren't aren't the leads of, of the platoon or the squad um, but you can still see the information there so you can kind of follow along and so there's a few different options that are really really important the first one there actually is going to be the private squad checkbox so if you look uh, just under the squads you'll see invite to platoon and then to the right of that there's a little box to the right of that you see mute platoon and to the right of that you see private squad that checkbox is going to be the first thing you want to uh, uncheck you want it to not be ticked uh, when you are opening up your squad um, and that's whether you're opening it up in a platoon or where, whether it's a standard one it's on by default just so it's not in the squad finder right away and such um, and you want to uncheck that and what that does is basically it just unlocks the um, description box now important note before I get into the description box is that the rule that was changed recently for planet side squads is that in order to set a description you have to have at least two people uh, in your squad in order to set a description it's a change that they made so that the squad finder list was a little bit easier to read um, and find the bigger squads and such uh, just so that you don't have a whole lot of clutter of one person squads um, so that's just the way it is um, and that's that's that so if you notice you know we the squad wasn't up until I had a few people in uh, this training that's why is because I had to wait for people to come in and then I can set the description and such but moving on so yeah you've got the description and you can say I have in there OA intro and general leadership training all welcome uh, that's the one I put in there there's a minimum limit of like four or five characters I think so you know you can't just put A or B or C or SKL or whatever um, so some nice description is is needed um, before you can open it once you have your description in there the only thing left to do at minimum is to hit the enable recruitment button uh, if you look out if you look like I said it's gonna be grayed out for you but the button right now will say disable recruitment so if you look back at where we're looking at private squad uh, two boxes down there's clear ban list and there's disable recruitment uh, when there's no description in that description box it will um, say enable recruitment uh, or no sorry when there is a description in there once you've gotten that private squad box unchecked and you have a description in there uh, the enable recruitment button will be shown in place of disable uh, you'll be able to hit that and then your squad will be open and people can see it and like I said as long as you have uh, at least two people in your squad to start so that's a longer rundown of how to do that now is there anyone in here who uh, would like to try opening a squad and guys please uh, hold off on the smoke and stuff <laughs> I would oh cool okay I will throw you over to Bravo then and I'll get you Okay, so, uh, oh shoot, actually, if you want to, I do this every single time somehow. If you want to throw me Bravo Squad back for a second, I'm going to reset the squad uh, back to what it look, would look like, and I'll walk you through opening it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, get rid of the description, hit Private Squad. So there we go. Gave you squad leads, now you should be able to see everything there. And so the very first thing you're going to do... Um, actually the private squad box unchecked itself for some reason that's weird but you'll have to do that at the very start and then the next thing of course that you'll do is go into the description box you can just put 
SKL open squad or something like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I can change it back uh, to what I had it before. So go ahead and uh, click the description box, put something in there, and then once you have enough characters, the enable recruitment button should light up, and you should build it. Yeah, there you go, perfect, perfect. And there we go. So now everyone can see the squad as open, and people can join if they wish. So that's it. That's literally all there is to it. Um, super simple, but um, yeah, it, there's there's a couple of rules that can definitely confuse people at start, so it's really, really nice that we can go through there. So nice job on that. If you want to throw me uh, the squad lead back, uh, I will see if anyone else wants to. Does anyone else want to try opening it with that squad? Okay, perfect. So yeah, that's exactly how that works, guys. That's It's really simple there. Uh, let me take a second to fix something here, and then I will continue. Okay, so next up, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about... Whoopsies, wrong button, sorry, Kasabi. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, next thing I want to talk about is what you're going to do, right, after you open your squad. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, the direction that you want to take your squad in. So the very first goal of your platoon, right, after you kind of gone through your head and, and what am I doing, um, as a lead, what am I giving to people, right? We want to circulate that through our heads. Um, but then the very first thing you're going to want to think after that is, um, the number one goal, which is to have fun, right? To give people a good experience. That is always, always, always the goal. Whether you are winning or whether you are losing, it doesn't matter, right? If you do it right, you should be able to get double teamed, get constantly OS'd, um, overall strike, um, you know, as, as many horrible things as you can imagine, uh, in, a, in an alert or whatever, and still have fun. Right? There's a certain way that you do that, and that's what I want to talk about. But just remember that that's the goal. It's not win, it's not lose, it's have fun. Because this is ultimately still a game. We all get wrapped up in it from time to time, I'm sure. Uh, yep, yeah, bashes as well. Um, we all get wrapped up in it from time to time, but fun is still the number one goal. And so you have your number one goal. You also have to decide, um, you know, Think to yourself, what am I doing with this with this squadron platoon? Am I being more casual? Some of you were in uh, games platoon earlier, right? And then just chilling out, hanging out, having fun, and that's um, nice. You can also be more sweaty and go for the alert, trying to take all the bases that you can, be strategic, um, all that good stuff. You can, you know, just be there for the farming. Um, you know, whatever it is. You can do meme squads. Um, something I like to do rarely from time to time is just run a entire uh, medic squad or entire medic platoon. Knives out, all medics. You know, it's, it's lots of fun. Um, actually, another one I like to do is called Saving Private Orby. Some of you might have played that before. Um, so like I said, it's all about just deciding what your goal is and communicating that to your platoon um, and having a squad description that reflects that so that no one's confused and everyone knows what they're getting. Okay, and then after that, there's a couple other technical things that I want to go over very, very quickly. So if you look at your map screen, I'm going to be throwing down some things. The one I just placed is the platoon waypoint. That's the one that's going to be used to direct all of the squads in a platoon. So Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta should be moving towards that platoon waypoint. We have the Alpha Squad waypoint and the Bravo Squad waypoint is the two squads we have open. Um, and the Charlie and Delta ones as well. I can't use those at the moment because we don't have those squads open. Um, but those would be there as well. And then I'm not going to place them down just because I can't do it for Alpha as well. But there are also fire team waypoints um, that you guys would see as squad leads. Um, so there's lots of different waypoints, and they all correspond to different levels of hierarchy within the platoon, right? They're all named um, in your map, op map options when you click on the screen. So all of you actually, if you right-click on the screen, on the map screen rather, you'll see personal waypoint, 
Um, and then as a squad lead, you'll see the squad specific waypoint and the squad specific uh, fire team waypoints, um, which you guys might see if you look at the squad list um, in the menu or in the bottom left while you're running around as infantry and such. Um, and those correspond just to those groups of players within the squad. Um, but then the most, probably one of the, well, yeah, maybe not quite as important as the squad waypoint, but just after that comes the smokes and the offense and defense requests. And I can't say how important these are. They are very universal, uh, honestly, in what they mean. Um, the smokes, so I'm going to go ahead and place a couple. I'll remove these after I explain them. But we have our orange, purple, green, and yellow smokes. Um, and like I said, very universally, um, they're used to indicate enemy uh, spawns, so sunders, uh, usually not routers, but mostly sunders, um, and um, stuff like, you know, yeah, mostly m mostly sunders. Sometimes routers, sometimes beacons for, for people that are really pointing stuff out, but if you see a smoke, it's almost 100% sure it's a sunder and not something you want to point two people towards. Um, so whether that's something you place uh, for everyone that's not in your squad platoon, but also for your squad platoon, you know um, that that's what you're communicating, is that there's a, a spawn uh, right there. And then the next part of that, uh, in terms of your tools and stuff you can place down, so we've got your waypoints and you've got your smokes. You also have offense and defense request, uh, requests, which I've also just placed on the map screen. These are really nifty little things. Uh, they're you know nice to look at, people see them, and they go, oh, you know, someone's putting that there, there must be a big fight about to happen, I can go help that out. Um, and that's kind of the, 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 the mental thing that sort of happens, right? You're, you're asking people and, and they see that. But the other thing it does is influence the join combat button, right? So we've got our join combat button, the game tries to go, you know, oh, what's, what's the biggest fight or what's the, the most fun fight? Um, but it will look and see uh, on bases which, which base also has a whole lot of offense and defense requests. And so if you have, like some, I've seen sometimes 20, 30 offense, defense requests on a single hex, and you can bet that people are going to see that and go, oh yeah, I want to go there. Um, and they can also just hit join combat, and it'll take them straight there, because the map sees that that's, that's where the leaders in the continent want people to go, um, and it can direct people there through the join combat button. So it's really, really nice. Um, nice little feature and uh, definitely does a lot. Now, where can I find these nifty little tools, you might ask? The answer is if you go into your squad menu, so hit P by default, go into your squad menu, just under the platoon tab in the top left of that screen, there is squad certs, which you can see will be the communications area, which will be those offense defense requests, and then the coordination area, which is all four smokes. Uh, in total, to sort out all of that, it is 400 certs, um, so it's quite a bit if you're a fairly new player, uh, by the, but by the time you've had some experience and you've gotten uh, some of your stuff already sorted out, um, it's fairly uh, fairly easy and definitely fairly important if you're going to get into uh, squad leading uh, or platoon leading uh, at all often. It's really, really nice to have. Okay, so we've been here for about 20 minutes, and people have been very, very kind to me, listening to me talk on and on and on. So while I uh, get myself set up for the next topic here, I want to ask if anybody has any questions. How useful is the join squad or insert key? Uh, so it can be fairly useful in the very beginning, I would say, um, especially if you are doing... Um, i got to stop hitting that button. Um, it can be fairly useful at the very beginning, especially when you are doing a gal job slay. At the beginning of the continent, people might have um, you know, missed out on getting to where you are. So it's, it's not something... Like, it can take a lot of time um, if you were to say everyone go to the warp gate and then hit the uh, squad lead deploy button, the insert key, um, just because then you're redeploying twice, basically. So it takes a lot of time, uh, but it is definitely something useful to tell uh, new players or people that are just coming um, into 
your platoon. You can say, hey guys, we're over at this base. If you want, you can just hit the insert key and you'll deploy. Um, so that's really nice. And yeah, Kasami definitely, if you have overpop in a certain area, um, the insert key can also bypass the overpopulation and people can get in there. So it has it has a niche use and it also has, um, it, it is it can be uh, important if you coordinate it right. Um, like Asami said, it, it has that use if you want to get into an overpop fight. Um, but in general, it, it is still another redeploy to get to the warp gate, which is the only place that the game allows you to do that, um, and then hit the insert key. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're going to use it.